Hello everyone. Today's topic is types of essays. So basically there are four types of essays in IELTS exam which I will show you and in one of the types there are actually two subcategories which I will explain to you. Okay, so let's start. The first one is agree disagree. And in this the subtype is to what extent do you agree or disagree? Now, in agree or disagree, here a general statement is usually given and you have to either agree with it or you can also go against the statement by disagreeing. So basically, it is one-sided discussion essay. So here the method that I followed was sticking to one side. That is only stating whether I was agreeing or stating whether I was disagreeing to the essay or that general statement. So if you are getting the question like to what extent do you agree or disagree? Here you can totally or fully, mainly, partly, and not at all agree or disagree with the statement. There are chances of self-contradiction in this kind of questions. So the tip is better go for fully or not at all agreeing or disagreeing to avoid self-contradictions. In this kind of questions, if we are going for one side, it is better for us. This is because Whenever we are saying that we are agreeing and we are giving the ideas and the explanations in support for that, we can explain that in a better way or elaborate that in a good way rather than saying we are agreeing or disagreeing in a partial way or sometimes we are saying that we are agreeing or disagreeing mainly with this thing. This is because there are times when we are having only one idea and on that idea if we are saying agreeing and then elaborating and again we are saying we are disagreeing and elaborating this kind of things causes contradiction in to what extent you agree or disagree essays so in both of the essays that is do you agree or disagree or the second one the subcategory that is to what extent do you agree or disagree here we are giving our ideas we are explaining that and at the end we are giving the examples which are in support of that idea and then we are just closing the circle that we began with our idea. So this kind of essay is that is to what extent do you agree or disagree is one or two sided essay depending on the thing you are saying in your opinion because if you are going for totally or not at all. It becomes one-sided opinion essay but if you are going for mainly or partly it becomes two-sided opinion essay now an example of agree or disagree type of essay that is opinion based essay can be like this some people believe that unpaid community service should be a compulsory part of high school programs for example working for a charity improving the neighborhood or teaching sports to younger children do you agree or disagree now the same kind of question can be asked like some people believe that unpaid community service should be a compulsory part of high school programs. To what extent do you agree or disagree? So here the both kind of agree or disagree that is opinion based essays the both kind is stated. The next kind of essays are advantage and disadvantage essay and there is also a subtitle under it which is 
The questions are generally like, do you think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages or vice versa? So, the basic kind of advantage and disadvantage questions in essays, how we answer them? Actually, here, usually a fact is stated and you have to write the advantage or merits as well as the disadvantages or demerits of that same statement and here also you have to provide examples now again there is a chance of contradiction in this kind of essays because if a single statement is given on the same thing you are giving some kind of merits and on the same thing you are giving some demerits so there are times when we are having only one idea and again we are going for the both positive and negative side of that idea so in this kind of essays one has to be cautious while answering this kind of essay are generally known as negative or positive discussion essay now in the subcategory of advantage and disadvantage essay that we already mentioned that they ask question like do you think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages or vice versa so here we have to state both advantages and the disadvantages as we already did in the previous time and then we have to provide our opinion here we have to state both advantages and the disadvantages then by providing our opinion we can state whether the advantages outweighs or outnumbers the disadvantages or not we do the same thing as we have done in the advantage and disadvantage type of essay the only difference here is we give our opinion regarding the pros and cons and again there are chances of self-contradiction in this kind of essays as well so this is basically a kind of pros and cons discussion plus our opinion type of essay an example of advantages and disadvantages essays can be like this computers are being used more and more in education discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this phenomena now in the subcategory of outweighing questions same questions can be given like Computers are being used more and more in education. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages. Do you think that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? Next is the discussion essays. That is, the essays in which we are asked to write or discuss both views now there is also a subcategory in this kind of essays in which they ask us about the opinion or discuss both views and give your own opinion so in the discuss both views and give your opinion kind of essays here two statements are generally given they are arguments actually and in one of the statement it asserts the opposite of the other one here you have to support both of the views like a debate you have to write the positive sides of both of the views and give your own opinion too the thing that i had done for my exam was the view that i supported I wrote that in body para 2 that is the paragraph after introduction and the body para 1 so 
it was easier for me actually to provide my opinion from there in the conclusion. Though sequencing like this does not matter for band score, I felt that it was a better way to write in the examination and maybe it was a better way to provide my views to the examiner in a much clear way. So this kind of essays are basically two-sided discussion plus the opinion type of essays. Now the essay type is discuss both views. Note well that it has not been asked to provide your opinion in this kind of essays and the major mistakes that students do here is giving their own opinion. And by doing this, the task response is reduced, means the band score from your task response is generally decreased if you are providing your own opinion in this kind of essays. So, in this kind of essays, just support the views, that is the both views, as you did in discuss both views and give your own opinion. The only difference in this kind of essay will be you will not give the point of view that is your own opinion now the first view that is the first set of people will say this 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 and you have to support that the first view will be in body para one and the second will be in body para two and again i'm saying never ever provide your own opinion here so this is basically two-sided discussion essay and again without any opinion so an example of discussion type or discuss both views type essay can be like this computers are being used more and more in education some people say that this is a positive trend while others argue that it is leading to negative consequences discuss both sides of this argument now if they only ask you to discuss both sides of the argument you know that is a two-sided discussion essay now the same question can be asked like this computers are being used more and more in education some people say that this is a positive trend while others argue that it is leading to negative consequences. Discuss both sides of this argument and then give your own opinion. So this one is two-sided discussion plus opinion type of essays. And in both of the type, you have to support your idea by giving enough elaboration and then you have to provide examples as well last but not the least is the two-part question type and in the two-part question type the questions can be connected like a cause effect or effect solution or cause solution or problem solution kind of essays or the two parts may be unconnected like cause or effect or solution plus another question so the cause effect or effect solution that is the connected two-part questions in this kind of questions we generally discuss about the reasons or the results and the remedies so maybe there are two or maybe three like they can ask the cause the effect and the solution here or only cause effect effect solution cause solution now while writing the causes focus on one or two ideas and explain them carefully with examples in BP1 or that is body para 1 in body para 2 give the effects which are relevant to the causes you stated in bp1 for example the causes in bp1 is 
the effect one due to cause one and explain and the effect two due to cause two explain with example this is a type of two questions essay the other type of two question essay that i explained is cause effect solution plus a question like is it positive or a negative trend or something like that can be asked now these are the two unconnected questions here after stating the answer to question one give your own opinion and that also depends on question two like the opinion will be regarding the fact this is a kind of discussion plus opinion essay an example of a two-part question which are connected can be like this students are becoming more and more reliant on computers what are some of the problems associated with reliance on computers and what are some of the possible solutions so in this kind of essays we can see that the problems associated with fact that is stated in this kind of question and the solutions for the same problem are being asked so basically it is a connected two-part question the second type of two-part question where the questions are unconnected can be like this as most people spend a major part of their adult life at work job satisfaction is an important element of individual well-being what factors contribute to job satisfaction how realistic is the expectation of job satisfaction for all workers now in this kind of question we can see the two questions that are given are not connected because in the first question they ask us about the factors contribute to job satisfaction so they are asking for the reasons the causes and in the second part they are asking how realistic is this expectation of job satisfaction that is they are asking about some kind of effect or what the thing is giving us that is they're not connected actually we can see so basically the two part unconnected questions can be of the same type and for answering this we have to support our answers with examples from our own experiences only